yesterday we spoke about how to handle the hardships of life we talked about how our prophet taught us that just because we say we believe in a law is not enough a law is going to test us in our faith and that he's going to test us until the day we die he's going to test us with the things we love the most we care about the most our families our money our property our lives the lives of our loved one and so this is why he taught us that there's one phrase that we can say that will help us to get through the shock of the hardness and that phrase is which means from a law do we come and unto a law we shall return also he taught us that not only is life filled with hardships but also there'll be moments of sadness moments of worry moments of anxiety and this is what we're going to speak about today just a few weeks ago one of my regular students here brother Ahmad, brother Ahmad asked us did the prophet ever experience depression did he ever experience sadness worry anxiety yes he did because he was a human being just like you and me that's part of being human we're gonna go through ups and downs in life some things are gonna make us happy in life some things are gonna make us sad in life and some things are simply just gonna worry us because again it's all a law's way of testing us it's all a law's way of seeing if we truly believe in him and if our eye is truly on what it should be on which is the hereafter paradise So how do we overcome the emotions of sadness? How do we overcome the emotions of worry and anxiety? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, just like saying, Inalallahi wa inalallahi rajun serves as a way of, of causing you to grasp control over whatever the problem in life may be and look at it the way you should look at it with patience well there are certain other words that the prophet taught us to say when our emotions of sadness emotions of worry and grief overcome us for example whenever the prophet became worried about something he used to say no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah the most great the most forbearing and no one has a right to be worshipped except Allah who is the Lord of the mighty the th Lord of the throne none has a right to be worshipped except Allah who is the Lord of the heavens the Lord of the earth and the Lord of the supreme throne again by saying this when you're worrying it lets you it slaps you back to reality it makes you understand that Allah is in control don't freak out Oh my God, I got bills to pay and I don't have the money to pay them. But guess what? No one has the right to be worshipped except Allah. He is the most great. He is the most forbearing. He is the Lord of the throne. He is the Lord of the earth. So by saying that, guess what? Wow, he's in control. So I'm not going to freak out. I'm gonna shake it off y'all heard that song by Taylor Swift shake it off I'm gonna shake it off and leave it in the hands of a law to deal with he'll get me through it the bills will get paid some way Allah is the Lord of the earth he can do anything so that's what the prophet used to say whenever he worried about something because he used to worry for example he used to worry about who's going to take care of his wife his wives and his children when he's gone he used to worry and when i die who's going to take care of my wives all these wives i have how will my wives survive they can't remarry no other men they cannot remarry no other man 
man, so how will my wife survive? He used to worry about that. Then he would say, wait a minute, Allah is the Lord of the earth. He'll make it happen. It's all in his hands. So I'm going to shake it off. Just shake it off and move on to the next thing. Let's get through the battle of Badr. Let's get through the battle of Tabuk. Let's get through teaching these converts what it means to believe in Allah. He'd shake it off after saying that. Also, we have another hadith that also when the prophet would hear of news that would distress him, he used to say, Oh, you, the ever living, the sustainer and protector of all that exists, by your mercy do I seek help. He would say that sometimes too. So again, something would distress him. Something would make him anxious. He wouldn't freak out. He'd call upon Allah. He'd say, Oh, you, Allah, the ever living. The one who never dies. The sustainer. The one who sustains life. And the one who protects it. I seek your help. And then he'd shake it off. Just shake it off and move on. I'm worried. We're getting ready to go and fight the battle of Uhud. We don't have the armory that the Quraysh have. We don't have the weapons they have. We don't have the, 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 the men power, the manpower that they have. I'm so anxious, but you know what? You, Allah, you are the sustainer and you are the protector. So I seek your help in this and I'm going to shake it off. Just shake it off. Abu Bakr, call the men. Let's get ready to fight. You see that? That's what the prophet would do. He was a human being like you and me. me. He suffered from anxiety, worry, the same as we do. But he never allowed these emotions to get the best of him. He simply shook it off and put it in the hands of Allah and moved on. And that's what we have to do in life, guys. Don't allow our problems to get the better of us. Shake it off. Put it in the hands of Allah and move on. Also, when the prophet was anxious about something, rather than allowing that thing to get the better of him, he would stop whatever he was doing. He would raise his eyes to the heavens and he would say, Glorify be Allah the most great. Oh, you Allah, the ever living, the sustainer and protector of all that exists. So again, shake it off. Put the problem in the hands of Allah and walk away, guys. That's it. Leave it to Allah to deal with. Leave it to Allah to sustain you. Leave it to Allah to protect you. Because whatever he has decreed is going to be whether you like it or not. So shake it off. And move on. Also, when the new Arabs, when the Arabs converted to Islam, one of the things the prophet focused on was teaching them what it meant to believe in Allah. He taught them how to shake it off, how to not allow their problems to consume him, to consume them, instead to shake it off. So he taught them, first of all, when something happens that's bad, say, Inna Allahi wa inna Allahi rajun, and then say, Oh Allah.
law. I seek your mercy. So do not entrust me to myself even for the blink of an eye. Instead, remedy all of my problems because there is none worthy of worship except you. So again, he taught the new converts to put their problems in the hands of a law, shake it off and move on. Deal with the other things in life that you can control. Stop worrying about what you have no control over and deal with that which you can control. Don't allow the ups and downs of life to get the better of you and wipe you out. Make you no good to your family, no good to your wives, no good to your children. Shake it off and leave it for Allah. This is what we need to do today. We have another hadith that one of the companions, she was a female. She was a female. She was going through some trying times. She was so depressed. She became depressed about an incident in her life. The prophet happened to pass her by. He saw that she was unhappy. So he went to her and he said, shall I not teach you some words that you should say when you are in times of unhappiness or in times of distress? He said, whenever you are afflicted with something that makes you unhappy or whenever you are afflicted with something that worries you or stresses you out, simply say, Allah is my Lord. And I will not associate anything with him. Supana Allah. What better words than that? Remember guys, your personal jinn, he wants to take you to hell. He wants you to become so overcome with your problems that you put them before Allah. You're so depressed because your husband has taken on a second wife. You're so depressed because you can't find a wife. You're so depressed because your job laid you off. That you've now made those things your God instead of Allah. You stop praying. You stop wearing hijab. You're not doing the good deeds you used to do because you're so out of it because you ain't got a man you're so sad because you feel like you're all alone get over it shake it off stand up say Allah is my Lord and I refuse to associate anything with him so I'm gonna shake it off if I don't have a husband in this world, Alhamdulillah, that means Allah got a good one waiting on me in the hereafter. Yeah, I'm single. Yeah, I don't have no children. Don't make fun of me, people, because I'll probably be married to a companion or a prophet and have hundreds of babies without even experiencing pain while you women go through the pain in this world and then the pain trying to raise it and hope it don't apostate from you at, at that too. So I'm shaking it off. Allah's my Lord. I accept his decree and I refuse to associate anything with him by putting it over him. You guys see that? This is the best advice the prophet could give anyone. Because whenever we allow our problems to consume us and take us away from earning Allah's love, earning his pleasure, doing the deeds that's pleasing to him, then we have associated partners with him. Shake it off and move on. I ain't got no husband, but I can travel the world. I ain't got no problem traveling. You got to ask a man's permission. I can eat whatever I want to eat. I don't even have to cook. 
if I want to eat out every night I can because I don't answer to nobody but a law. Shake it off. Also, we have another hadith. Whenever a person, one of the companions, would become afflicted with sadness or anxiety, the prophet taught them to say, In of the law, he wa, in of the lay, he rajun. And then some of them would also say, Oh Allah, I am your slave. I am the son of your male slave and your female slave. I am in your power, Allah. Your command concerning me prevails. And your decision concerning me is just. So I call upon you by every one of your beautiful names that you have revealed and have taught us of. Here you can see, you're calling upon a law here. This is a beautiful dua, a beautiful supplication. Because as you can see, you're shaking it off. You're not letting what other people say or think about you get to you. You are saying that I am living the decree of a law. His decree prevails. Not what the other people want for me. Not what they think I should be or should have. Oh Allah, you have chosen to keep in the knowledge of the unseen with you. To make the Quran the delight of my heart, the, the delight of my breast, and the remover of my anxieties and my sorrows. This is a wonderful supplication that I say on a regular basis. Because again, as you live your life, you not only have to deal with your personal gen trying to trick you up by making you sad, making you depressed, making you anxious. You got to deal with the human gens out there too. Making fun of you because you have no children, because you have no husband, or because your husband's got four wives. No, no, no. That was a law's decree. No one can change what a law has decreed for them. I am simply in acceptance of whatever it is. I've made a law the light of my heart. I've made the Quran, his words, the light of my life. Your words can't hurt me. Your words can't depress me. I am in acceptance of Allah's decree because I know he knows what's best for me. So I'm shaking you off. And I'm moving on. Moving on to glory. Allah's glory, not yours. See that? If you recite this supplication, it will instantly remove your anxiety. It will instantly remove your sadness. And it will instantly put you where you need to be at peace with yourself. So try saying that supplication the next time someone makes you depressed because you don't have a husband or you don't have any children. We have to also understand as Muslims that one of the biggest causes of stress for us is money. And many of us, including myself, suffer with this. How to pay the bills. That's my number one stress. It ain't about having a man because, inshallah, I'm going to be married to Moses. So I ain't worried about that. I got a, uh, my husband in paradise uh, out top any man in this world, so I could care less about that. But my problem is, how am I going to pay my bills? My rent, my lights, buy food, plus run this website. Because I don't have that many people donating money here. We don't belong to no masjid. This website consists of just a bunch of housewives and teenage kids who are growing up here with me. So again, one of the biggest causes of stress is how to pay the bills. Well, guess what? Our prophet taught us how to relieve ourselves from this stress. So many people actually die or even commit suicide because they can't come out of their bills. 
Well, listen to what the prophet told one of the companions one day. One of the companions was suffering from worry. He was trying to figure out how he was going to take care of his wives and kids. He didn't have no money. The prophet said to him, Shall I not teach you some words, which if you say them, Allah will remove your anxiety, and he will take care of your debt? He said, In fact, say this in the morning and say it at night and those words are oh Allah I seek refuge with you from anxiety and sadness and I seek refuge with you from inability and laziness and I seek refuge with you from cowardice and miserliness and I seek refuge with you from being overcome by debt and from the oppression of men. He said, say that every morning when you wake up and every night before you go to sleep and Allah will take away your worry and he will discharge your debt. And I am a living witness that this works. I am a living testament that that supplication works. Allah will remove the debt and he'll let you care less about how we gonna pay it. And this companion tells us he did exactly what the prophet said and Allah removed his worry and Allah helped him to pay off his bills. I'm a living testimony to that. So again, for those of you who are worried about how to pay the bills, and again, most of us worry from that, Say this supplication. Say it every morning when you wake up and say it every night before you go to sleep and Allah will get you out of that situation and he will remove the anxiety from your heart from it. Again, we have to understand as Muslims that life is meant to be a challenge for us. Life was not meant to be a bowl of cherries. Life was meant to be like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get until you bite down into it. So thus, life is filled with stresses. Life is filled with disappointments. But we have to learn to shake it off. Just shake it off. Shake it off, guys. We have to remain firm in our belief in Allah. You truly believe in Him? Then put your problems in Allah's hands. Let Allah take care of it. Know that He will cause you to survive. Remember, as long as you are living, Allah will cause you to survive. As long as your heart is beating, he will find a way for you to survive. It's only when your heart stops beating that it's over. So remain firm in your faith and do not allow the humps of life to get you down. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, whoever is constant in seeking forgiveness from Allah, Allah will make a release for him from every trouble. And Allah will make a way out for him from every oppression. And Allah will sustain him from where he would never expect it. So again, it's all about believing in Allah, having faith in him, seeking forgiveness for him, and he will cause you to survive. Also, the prophet used to say, whoever is seized by anxieties and stresses, you should say on a regular basis that there is no power and there is no strength except in Allah. Because saying these words is a treasure from paradise. And we talked about this before. The strength, the power is in Allah's hands. Allah is the controller of the heart. He's the manipulator of life. Allah can take a bad situation that you are in and make it something good. You simply have to trust in him, call upon him, ask him to help you, and shake it off. Shake it off. Again, we were created 
to worship Allah and simply saying that we believe in him is not enough. Allah is going to test us in our belief with everything we care about. Our family, our money, our jobs, our friendships, even our websites, such as Sunna followers. Only those who truly believe in Allah will pass the trials of life. And what makes them do so is the fact that they trust in and call upon him in their time of need. And they refuse to allow life to knock them down. They shake it off. This is why the prophet told us to say, Subhana Allahi wa bihamdihi. On a regular basis. To say Subhana Allah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar on a regular basis. Because saying these words, these words represent remembrance of Allah. And they will help keep us firm in our faith. Help us get over the humps that life sends our way. And finally, we have to understand that even though we were created to be tested in our faith. Even though the test will continue until we die. Understand that Allah does not place a burden on any of us that is too great to bear. So bear your problem with dignity, with class, and humble yourself to Allah as you stand and shake it off. Something for us to ponder, something for us to remember as we live the goodness of Islam. Sunnah Baba, protectors of the Sunnah. Sunnah Baba, protectors of the Sunnah.